The budget is lawmakers' number one job during this 30-day session, but it's almost always the last thing to get done. Lawmakers tussled over how much money to save and how much to spend on projects that got neglected during the dry years. Representative Harper, the state uh, got a bonus this year, and we've got a little extra money in the checkbook. How did we do this session, kind of keeping the checkbook uh, balanced? Uh, great question. And including this year and last year, the state has gotten an extra $3 billion. I mean, that is huge. Um, and what we've done with all that money is spent and spent and spent. And I'm super concerned about that. Because when you look at how much we've raised our state budget these last two years, 20% spending increase. The safe number to raise our budget by when you go back looking at the last 30 years, inflation, population growth, 3%. So we're raising the budget in two years, what should naturally take about seven. So this is really setting us up for a, a, a catastrophe. We know the oil and gas industry is boom and bust. It's not if, but when the next bust happens. And and when that happened last time, we had to sweep money from every elementary school and middle school in the state and high school. We had to furlough workers. We had to sweep money from government agencies. It was really, really painful. We have gone through big spending periods before, and, and uh, people say some good things happened. So this 20% increase in spending over two years, that's even greater than Governor Bill Richardson's increase in spending when he was running for president, right? And we got uh, you know a spaceport for you, a rail runner for you, and uh, yeah, that spaceport has just been amazing for our economy, right? I mean, I, mean I, I love space. I'd love to see it be successful. Maybe it'll start here soon, but um, a lot of the spending that we've done with this $3 billion is gonna evaporate. Your, your normal New Mexico family won't see any difference in their roads or, or anything else. Now we have got the tax stabilization uh, reserve fund, but people want to make some changes to yeah, this. Yeah, so this is really sad for me. So one of the last things that Chairman Laranyaga did, a great statesman, was set up this tax stabilization reserve. And it was designed so that when it's a sunny day, it captures money and makes it hard to take out. And then during a rainy day, it frees up that money so we don't have to come in and sweep from schools. Well, the only thing raining right now is money and we are going to try to tap this fund right now. It just blows my mind. Senator Smith, what were your top priorities coming into this budget session? My top priorities are funding government in a responsible fashion, uh, trying to figure out what's going to be reoccurring and what's not reoccurring in dollars, and that's a real challenge when you rely on oil and gas. Uh, there's an element out there that's forgotten what we went through the last prior seven or eight years and they just believe it's going to last into perpetuity uh, on, on that. And so uh, you take a lot of wrath from your own colleagues, uh, but we still have to be responsible to the citizens, the employees, and uh, education, uh, health care uh, on that. And uh, my first priority is to try and be as fair as we can uh, with reoccurring dollars. So some of your colleagues say, we've got this big windfall, we've got extra money after a long dry spell, we should invest in those things we've been talking about this whole time, we should spend more and save less now. Well, you know uh, what's happened, we've grown the budget in this session uh, three times the CPI on that. You're getting in a very dangerous zone, especially if the bottom falls out of oil and gas. Is there anything that you didn't get accomplished this session that you want to make sure happens next year? Uh, I'm hoping that uh, next year that uh, we have a spending level that has the revenues to support it uh, on that. And I express concern on House Bill 2 that when you have a, an increase in spending three times what the CPI is nationally, uh, you've got some challenges for next year but uh, I think we'll be able to make, make it fit and we're gonna work through that. But once again, this state needs to thank oil and gas. I'm getting letters that we've gotta get off fossil fuels. They don't tell me how we're gonna replace the $3.5 billion that they deliver to our state budget. Well, uh, cannabis uh, legalization was something that didn't happen this session and an advocate say there would have been at least some money there 
Well, they're trying to sell uh, cannabis on the basis that it's revenue generating. Contrary to what they're telling, uh, the financial people in Colorado saying it's costing the state more with the services they have to deliver than what cannabis is generating for their state. So the, the buzzword that it's going to generate all these dollars and all these jobs uh, is not ac the actual fact of what's happening to our neighbor to the north. Mr. Speaker, Representative Harper told me the legislature has been raining money, that this uh, budget is a fiscal catastrophe. Have you been responsible with money? Absolutely. We are going to set a record for reserve levels. We're going to be $2 billion of cash reserves. We've never seen that before. We've also never hit 25% reserves, uh, at least in living memory of anyone involved in the budgeting process. We are above and beyond the gold standard for states, even states like New Mexico, that are overly reliant on a single industry for state revenue, in our case being uh, the oil and gas industry. Uh, we are working very hard to uh, wean ourselves off our dependence on oil and gas revenue. Uh, that has an additional benefit of helping us address head on the climate crisis that we're facing. And uh, as we do that, we will see a more diversified economy. But through all of that, we need to make sure we're maintaining sufficient levels in the reserves. Uh, the bill when it left the House had 26% reserves. After the work the Senate has done, it's 25% reserves. Uh, Representative Harper and some of his colleagues in the minority are focused on a single account within the overall portfolio that makes up the state's general fund reserves. Uh, and we are having a technical bill that is moving forward to tweak the way money is shared between those accounts so that the overall 25% reserve balance is also reflected in each of the individual uh, accounts that make up the portfolio. Are we talking about the Tax Stabilization Reserve Fund? Yeah, the Tax Stabilization Reserve has uh, one, over $1.3 billion in it. Uh, and when the late Representative Larry Nyaga set up his rainy day fund bill, uh, no one in the legislature anticipated a uh, billion dollars in a single year of oil revenue that's resulted in a massive series of deposits into that account. But the argument is, you know, now we are flush, now we have the money, now that fund is doing well, but if we look at history, we see that we're probably at the top of a roller coaster with oil and gas. Why make it easier to take the money now when we are flush in, and instead of waiting until we hit bottom, which everybody says so will happen. We're not making it easier to spend the reserves. And uh, respectfully, Representative Harper is simply mistaken. Uh, this, is, this issue of the uh, technical account management within the reserves is something that the Republicans have attempted to seize on to try to confuse the public into thinking that we are running a deficit. But the financial summaries published both by the House and the Senate, accepted by the governor's office, show it is, there, is, there is literally no doubt we are running 25% reserves. Legalizing recreational marijuana and the red flag gun law, um, they got a lot of attention uh, before the session, um, but they, uh, they really took up a lot of time and conversation during the session. Were they undercooked before they got here? Well, the extreme risk protection order bill was put through the legislative process. Changes were made, and it's on the governor's desk. Uh, yeah, I, in fact, I think I just signed it yesterday. So it's, it's on its way up. Uh, it was subject to the committee process for a reason, because people come from a diverse set of backgrounds. They look at the bill. They have ideas for how to make it better. But it's a gun bill, and this is a budget session. It's a bill that's going to save someone's life this year. And... Maybe more than one person will be alive when we convene in the next session who otherwise wouldn't be, and that makes it worth it.